What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna build the volume slider for our MP3 player with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna work on the volume slider for our MP3 player. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, we are moving right along, almost finished with our MP3 player. Today we're gonna to look at the volume slider, so we can play a song. and do the volume. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So we already know how to use a slider, we've done that before. So we're gonna just copy and paste a lot of that. And uh, this is actually pretty easy. We should be able to knock this out pretty quick. So first of all, let's rearrange some stuff because as it is now, uh, we don't have room really for that, that volume slider on the side. And we need to change some things around from pack to grid and add some frames and things so that we can sort of position it the way we want. So I'm gonna come over to our playlist box, our song box. And that's sort of down here below our functions. Here it is, create playlist box. And you see we've put it in root. Instead of putting it in root, let's create another uh, frame. Uh, let's call this create playlist. Oh, let's just call this create master frame. And let's just call this, I don't know, master underscore frame. And this is a frame and we want to put it in root. Now we can just master underscore frame dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of 20, just because our playlist box originally had 20. And so we're going to take off that pad Y and it'll just, this'll, this'll handle it. So, all right, let's kind of start to put some of our stuff in the master frame. So instead of putting our playlist box in root, we can put that in master frame. And if we come down here and look at our buttons, those are in the control frame. So we can put that in there as well. Now we need to grid these things on. So instead of packing this playlist box, let's go grid and let's put this in row zero, column zero. And then the controls, the volume controls, same thing. We wanna put those in the grid. We've put them in the master frame here. And let's give these a row equal one, column equals zero. So that's right underneath the playlist. And see what else, our slider, how did we do this slider? Let's kind of look through here for this. Uh, slider, we put that in root. Let's put that in the master frame as well. And let's give this a row of two, column equals zero and pad 30 is fine there. So let's save this and just run this to make sure this looks okay. So Python player.py. And uh, we're getting an error, let's see, line 296. Missed something here. Oh, forgot to change it to grid. <laughs> okay, so, all right, that looks good. Let's save this, come back here, run this guy again. And we're back, it looks mostly the same as normal. These buttons are really smooshed up there, so let's give the buttons some pad Y as well. Uh, let's see, those were the control frame, I think. There it is. So here, let's just give this a pad Y of 20. And then we can come down here to the slider, and instead of giving this a pad Y of 30, we can give this a 10, because it's already getting 20 from the above thing. So let's save this. Run this again, make sure that looks okay. Okay, and that looks pretty much like it did before. So now on the right hand side here, we wanna put another slider. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's come up here to, let's see, it's gonna be in master frame. And let's bring it down here and let's put this next to our other slider, have all of our sliders grouped together. So let's create volume slider. And let's call this volume underscore slider. And actually, let's just copy this whole thing. All right, but instead of my slider, obviously we wanna call this volume slider. And we wanna put this in row zero, column one. And I don't think we need to give this any padding. 
Okay, and it's in the master frame. Okay, so again, this is a TTK scale, just like our other slider. And let's look through here. So it's in our master frame, that's good. We want it from zero to 100, no, we want this from zero to one. And I'll talk about this more in a minute, but basically the way we get volume with Pygame, it's a scale from zero to one and it's a float. So it's like 0 .001, 0 .002, 0 0.001.002, all the way up to one, right? So we want this to go from zero to one. And for orientation, horizontal is left to right. Let's put this vertical. So vertical, that's up and down. Volume sliders are often up and down, right? And we've, we don't wanna set this at zero to begin with. We wanna put it at one. That's, what, that's 100%. We wanna put it at the bottom because when the song starts, it's gonna be playing at full volume. So we don't want this to be at zero. That would mean the song's not playing at any volume. So we'll put this at value of one. That makes sense. And let's give this a command of uh, volume. We haven't created that yet. We'll do that in just a second. And let's see, finally length. Hmm. Let's see, the default is I think 100. So let's go 125 to make it a little bit bigger. So, okay, so now let's create that volume function real quick. And let's come to our function section here and let's just uh, create volume function. And let's define volume and let's pass. Now we need to put an X in here because when we move the slider around, it's gonna automatically uh, put its position into this function. So we need a variable to hold that position, even though we're not actually gonna use it. The function is gonna be looking for it, just like with our other slider right up here, we did the same thing, even though we don't actually ever use an X. So let's just save this and run it just to make sure this looks okay. And it doesn't look great, so we need to mess with this. Now, this is just like this. Let's put this in its own little uh, box. Let's use a uh, label frame instead of a regular frame so that we can label this and so that it looks better. So let's do that real quick. So head back down to our slider and we put this in the master frame. Now instead of doing that, let's put this in the volume frame, which we haven't created yet. So let's go ahead and create that. And where do we wanna put this? Doesn't really matter. We have other frames somewhere player control frame, let's put this uh, create volume label frame, right? So we call this volume frame, and this is gonna be a label frame instead of just a frame, right? And we wanna put this in the master frame, right? So let's copy this. And we can give this a text of, let's say, volume. So let's put this on the screen. We can go volume underscore frame dot grid. And this is going to be in row zero column equals one. So it's right next to the player. Now we need to change, let's see, the slider itself. Where is the slider? Right here. We don't need to grid this anymore because it's not in the master frame anymore. Now it's in the volume frame. So we can just pack this if we want. So we'll just do that. So, all right, let's save this and run it see what this looks like. We're gonna need to mess with it a little bit more because it's shoved right against there. And, and I'm not thrilled with the size of this, so we wanna change that as well. So, okay, let's give this a pad Y of 10 first inside of the label frame. So it's not right up against there. Let's, so let's save this and run it and see what that looks like. Okay, so we gave it some padding inside of here. So down here and up here. So that's increased the overall size. So I like this size. So, okay, that's good. Now we just need to push this whole label frame over a little bit. So we'll use a pad X for that. Y is up and down, X is left to right, right? So we're familiar with that. So let's go to our, let's see, where did it go? Volume frame. And let's just give this a pad X of like, I don't know, 20 or so. All right, so let's go ahead and save this, run it. Okay, so now we're looking good. It's pushed over a little bit. Everything's lined up. These are underneath here. We could stretch these all the way across if we wanted to. Eh, it looks fine like this. I kind of like having this space here. And so, okay. So now we need to work on actually making this change the volume. And this is actually really, really easy. So head back over here and let's go to our volume control. And to set the current volume of any given song that's playing, we just call our Pi game dot mixer dot music 
dot set underscore volume. And then what do we want to set it to? Well, we want to set it to whatever the slider currently is. Remember, sliders are floats. So this set music thing, this set volume thing, it takes a position from zero to one, right? So it's never going to be greater than one. And our slider is set from zero to one. So it's never going to be greater to one. And since sliders by default are floats, think back to when we created our other slider, I showed you, we put it on the screen, the label that shows exactly what it is as we move it around. Well, we had to turn that into an integer because by default, it's a float. Well, actually that comes in handy now because what we want is a float for this set volume thing. So we can just go uh, volume slider dot get, and that's a function. So put our little function brackets and that's it. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. Now let's pull this over, add some songs, play one. Can you hear it going down? We put it all the way up, it turns it all the way off. You can see it's still playing. And it's cool. So uh, we are basically done. Now, if you're curious ever, if you want to know what the current volume is, like this is great, it works, but we may need to know what the volume is for some reason, for who, who knows. If it gets too high, we might want to like automatically throttle it back, or who knows, you just might want to know what the actual volume is. So we can actually get that really easily. So let's look at that really quick. And to do that, we just, let's create a, a variable. Let's call it current underscore volume. You don't have to do this, but it makes it easier. And we just set that to pygame dot mixer dot music dot get underscore volume, right? So, Let's come down here to the very bottom. Remember we have this, uh, this label that we keep using for testing purposes, you know? Let's uncomment this out, and it starts out at zero, and we call that slider label. So let's just come up here into this function, and let's just set our slider label dot config to the current volume, and just output this on the screen just so we can see what it is. So. Let's go ahead and run this guy. And now that thing has disappeared, so we have to resize because it's hiding down here. So uh, let's add some songs. Let's play one. Now when we start to move this, uh-oh, hold on. Object type float has no len. What did we do? Ah, <laughs> we need to set the text to equal that. And okay, that's fine for the volume slider, but instead of putting it right here, let's copy this and comment this out. And let's put these two lines of code in the play function. So whenever the song plays, it will automatically um, put that out on the screen just in case we want to know it. So, uh, well, actually not right there. We want to load the song first. So probably down here at the bottom in this function. Okay, so let's save this and run it. And let's add some songs. When we play one, you can see right there it's at 0.99. And as we toggle this thing down, well, <laughs> it's not changing because we changed this back. All right, actually, instead of putting the current volume, let's put current volume times 100. And let's copy these. And also, let's put this in our uh, slider for the volume thing. So come down to our volume. And there it is. And actually, we can just uncomment these. And again, here I'm going to times 100. And you'll see why this just makes more sense. It's easier to read than the decimal. OK, so add songs, add main songs, let's play one. So it's at 99 point, basically 100, right? So you can see it's not quite at 100. And as we toggle this thing down, you can see 71, 61, 41, all the way down to 0, 0. It's not actually 0, it's 0, right? It's not actually 18, it's 0.18, but we times it by 100 just so it's better 
to read this, easier to read this thing. And uh, that's cool. So I'm gonna come back here and let's say, uh, get current volume, but I'm gonna comment this out because we don't really want this. And let's head back to our play function. And again, let me comment this, get current volume. But again, I'm gonna comment this out. And if we come down to our, the very bottom of our program, let's comment out that slider label thing uh, because we don't wanna actually have that information on. I just wanted to show you that it's easy to get that if you wanna do that. All right, so let's come back here, play this thing one more time. Add some songs. And all right, so, ah, uh, man, I don't know. I think we're gonna call this done. Now, if there's something else you guys want me to do, comment in the comments below. If I can think of some other feature to add to this, we'll open this back up and, and play around with it some more. But I think this is pretty good. I think this is pretty much done. Pretty basic MP3 player, but, you know, we've learned all kinds of cool stuff, how to use sliders, how to move them automatically to get song lengths, how to uh, do the volume, play buttons, forward buttons, back buttons, pause buttons, start buttons, stop buttons how to add songs, how to add one song, how to add a bunch of songs, how to remove one song and a bunch of songs. Uh, very cool. So I think you'll agree this one was a pretty easy one. There were some little tricky parts here and there, but really not that bad, really, when, once we sort of dig into this. And Pygame did a lot of the heavy lifting as far as, you know, playing the music and all that stuff. After that, it was just a bunch of tinkering on our part to make it look, you know, the way we want it to look. And uh, yeah, I think this is pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com, and we'll see you in the next video.